I looked up, sweltering, in the blistering hot sunshine. The rays of light beamed down over me and seeped through the dark circles of glass on my face. I felt the cooling breath on my neck. In the unbreathable humid heat, it was incredibly refreshing. I turned to seek the source and physically felt my jaw drop to the floor. She stood behind me, a petite redhead, with sun-kissed streaks of blonde. Hi. Hi, sorry, I'm Laurie. She held out her hand for me to shake. I tried in vain to casually wipe the sweat from my palm on my shirt before I obliged. I smiled to mask my embarrassment. She smiled. She finds me amusing. I guess time would tell whether this was a good thing or not. I'm Rob. I know. I'm one of Leo's dreaded entourage. The wife. Oh. My heart sank. Always a catch. Yeah, I get that a lot. He's not, he's not really a bad guy. He is, an arrogant moron at times. And sometimes he is a first-class prick. But he's not bad. It's the ego that does it. He deserves a chance. Or at least, a solid reason for you to hate him. I've not got an anti-Leonardo campaign going on here, despite what seems to be the general consensus. I know. But I can see how hard it is to let someone else take his place and I don't expect you to give him anything less than a hard time. She smiled at me again. A nice, warm smile. I just wanted to come and say. Hey. Hey. I watched her walk round to Leonardo's side of the garage and smiled to myself. I don't know why but I felt better for her, hey. Caught uncharacteristically off guard, I turned around and stepped straight into Duncan. Duncan McKenna was slender and bald. I had often sat beside him and studied the various tattoos which adorned his body. Dozens of intricate images woven together to form as mass of color which extended across a vast majority of his body. I once remarked that one day, not too far from now that he would cease to be flesh-colored and there would be no parts of his skin left unblemished by the ink. Each victory for the team affords him the opportunity to display a new, unique celebration. Each victory brings a proud smile and a hocked-up trouser leg as he parades around the garage with his new scab. Nice, isn't she? I followed his gaze towards Laurie and then diverted my attention back. Yeah, she seems nice enough. He looked at me with a knowing smirk. Grabbing the bottom of his oil-stained shirt and pulled it free from its shackles of the team overalls and lifted it. He turned around. The sight which greeted me literally took my breath away. It was Trent. His image on his back. Not a publicity pose, a private one taken from a picture snapped whilst we were taking a break between races. Chilling out and relaxing. Enjoying the margaritas the establishment had to offer. A checkered flag ran along the bottom and shooting stars shot out from the top of the image. It truly was a majestic piece of artwork. Duncan had served as his chief engineer and notorious partner in crime for most of his adult life and had followed him from team to team. At one stage he became stipulated as part of the contract negotiations. A fitting tribute from the bottom of his heart to a man he respected and admired deeply. Trent, for his part deserved every last drop of that admiration. What do you think? I forced my mouth to close for fear of stray flies entering it. I think it's brilliant, mate. Leonardo brushed past us and made his way to the back of the garage. I sensed that I was not alone in my unmasked hostility towards our newest member. The glint of distrust which flickered in Duncan's face confirmed it. His engineers may not be as vocal and their opinions will be influenced quicker but they appeared to be on a similar par to mine. A whistle came from the back of the garage, followed by a fierce Duncan. He raised his bushy eyebrows and let out a sigh. He turned and slumped towards the monitor containing Leonardo's lap performance information. Leonardo stared at the screen trance-like. As if he was somehow downloading the data, directly into his mind, via the screen. Ross stood beside him, equally engrossed. 
Duncan joined them and as he looked at the screen seemed to fall under the same spell. I looked over at the car. Affectionately christened Tuliza. No particular reasoning behind the name. It just felt wrong not to give some form of identity to a machine which had carried us to such tremendous victories. Trent had named his beast Tammy. Now she was known simply as AL3. I'd normally be sat in the driver's seat right now but I was hesitant. Everyone could sense it, or at least I assumed that they could, and that's why they were hanging back. Enough was enough, I stepped towards her, and the most extraordinary emotion washed over me. Fear. I was scared and hesitant to enter the car I had come to toast. I had an experienced fear like this since I'd first begun my racing career. A chancer at Alton Park, competing with the big boys in a clapped-out rust bucket. I had fought my corner and moved up through the ranks. It wasn't easy by any stretch of the imagination. I couldn't count the amount of times I'd been in the toilets vomiting before a race on my fingers anymore. But I had never felt a fear as strong as this before. It took all of my concentration to stop my legs from turning to jelly as I walked. My engineer looked at me, willing me to put one foot in front of the other and continue on my path towards Tuliza. I focused on him. He was my fixed point. I reached the car and ran my fingers across its smooth paintwork to validate my progress. Robbie, my fixed point, ensured I was ready to roll. He checked the various fixtures and fittings on my race suit and helmet and gave me a reassuring tap as a go-ahead. I responded with a simple nod of the head, and took my place in the driver's seat. I waited. I've often likened this moment to the time dilation experienced were we to ever be situated at the event horizon of a black hole. What will be minutes for the thousands of amped spectators, engineers and officials will seem like an eternity of waiting for the grid. With each passing millisecond, the anticipation mounts. The urge to accelerate grows and becomes an internal fight for control. The incessant sparring between your mind and your gut becomes overwhelming as you sit in a state of blistering concentration waiting for the lights to change. The moment they do, the battle commences. I'm the first to admit that starts are not my strongest suit. It's not like I could put up a convincing rebuttal against it anyway the statistics speak for themselves. I don't seem to grab the momentum until I'm out of the first corner and fighting with the pack, desperately trying to pull free. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is my specialty, fighting my way through the ranks. It's just me and Tuliza and our tussle for clean air. Not a great start on the pit exit, my pace is off the money but I'm not vying for pole right now. I'm simply trying to garner enough information for the team to plan my strategy. It's the first race of the season and most notably my first race back since the tragedy that befell my teammate. Hopes are not high for us at the present moment in time. I'd like to surpass the expectations, I'd like to validate my place in the team but I'm reluctant to say that I can.